Welcome to our webinar, How to Prevent Login Fatigue on Shared Use iOS Devices. My name's Adam, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Tim. We're both part of a team focused exclusively on healthcare solutions. So a brief look at our agenda for the day. We'll first talk about shared iOS devices used at the point of care, common user and IT problems that arise from those use cases, and then dig into modern authentication solutions targeted at solving a key problem for users around login. We'll give you a demo of a new solution from Jamf centered around this same problem to streamline login, and of course, be on the line to monitor questions and provide answers throughout. iOS devices have been used by care teams in a variety of settings, and they're all centered around a key goal. That is to make people more efficient through mobile technology. One of my favorite examples is at Parkview Medical Center in Pueblo, Colorado. The team many years ago set forward their strategy to enhance the way that their care teams communicate and collaborate every day. They really dug in in a number of ways. First, mapping out all the ways in which they work, involving a wide spectrum of people across the organization, assessing all the tools, technologies, and infrastructure needs, including wireless considerations that all need to come together to make these types of technology-driven processes possible. And from there, they set out on an advanced selection process to outline the best applications and infrastructure partners and device manufacturers that could bring their strategy to life. And what they found was an amazing app called Patient Touch, developed by Patient Safe Solutions that could streamline the way in which care team members work from an iPhone. Here you see a member of the collaborative care team who can see their unified inbox, get access to messages about a particular patient. From that patient record, see every member of the care team that's assigned to them and quickly send a message with patient context right back to another member of the care team. They can even answer a call right within this application. Now, something like this can take a typical interaction from 15 minutes down to 15 seconds. And Parkview had some amazing outcomes with this technology. They had 100% of their clinicians adopting it, using it to capture specimen collection at the bedside. This led to a large decrease in medication administration errors, an increase in medication administration accuracy. And I think this is most impactful, a 210% increase to HCAP scores for first dose education. That means patients are being explained what meds they're taking when they're getting them for the first time. Now, it's not to say that members of the Parkview team weren't doing all of this before the technology, but that little reminder within the application that tells them, this is the first time a patient is taking this medication, goes such a long way. I love this quote from Steve, the CIO at Parkview. With patient touch, we've seen a 60 minute reduction per nurse, per shift, in the time spent on documentation and coordination. What would any of us do with an hour given back per day? And it's not just the efficiencies. IT saw a robustness to the platform. With over a thousand users on the system, there were only a couple help desk calls per month around connectivity. Another example from UC Health in Colorado, where the needs of the pandemic drove forward a new mobility use case. For UC Health, COVID brought forward a new need for community collaboration. And they worked with the city of Denver and many other stakeholders to set up mass vaccination sites. They first identified a whole cross-functional team across their own org, as well as these other community groups, and then set out to form a number of pilot sites throughout the month of January and February, trying different technology and refining the process and workflow. Now, about this same time, Epic released new functionality in the Rover application, all centered around mobile vaccination workflow. Now, a member of the care team had everything they needed to check in, vaccinate, document, and check out a patient all from one app. So, of course, UC Health was able to leverage this application as part of this transfer to mobile as they iterated their process. Now, I love these stats. 10,000 vaccines administered over these two six-hour day periods. And the efficiencies are pretty amazing. 22 minutes per car, which included that 15-minute observation period. And another amazing stat, the use of mobile technology reduced per patient vaccination time from three minutes to 30 seconds. Think about that for a moment. That's a huge reduction in time spent on the actual process. Now, what I love so much here is that UC Health 
put together a mass vaccination playbook for other institutions to model, and it's available on their website. As one of the senior directors, Mark, says, if we can help other agencies in their efforts and they can learn from what we did, well, that's good for getting the vaccine into arms and being able to move forward sooner rather than later. So what do these stories have in common? Well, both of them show us how iPhone can be at the center of delivering care. And as these mobile strategies evolve, new complexities arise when a user has multiple key applications available to them on one device. Our friends over at Patient Safe Solutions, recently acquired by Vocera, put together a study a few years ago looking into the trends around mobility in healthcare. And as you see at the top of this chart, HIPAA compliant secure messaging, voice and secure message consolidation, and critical results in alert delivery are among the top drivers for mobile adoption. And to really understand why these are the drivers, you have to understand the current state. Users everywhere across healthcare are flooded with choices of how they communicate. And in some cases, they're not even choices, they're requirements. Here, look at all the different disparate ways in which, let's say a pharmacist or case manager or transport technician needs to communicate and therefore what devices they can do that with. So there's really a desire to find a better way and unify this all down to perhaps one framework or one device or even one or a few applications. Now, we've been talking all about healthcare today, but it's important for everyone here listening to know that these problems are not unique to frontline workers in healthcare. Employees in field services or retail or manufacturing have these same challenges when accessing a device from a shared pool. Now, when we think about shared device deployments, this is a topic that Jamf has been focused on for years. And the reason being, well, we know that deployments can widely vary between organizations and they can be complex, but we really only know a few things for certain. Devices need to come out of a box and get enrolled into a management system. And someday, well, they'll need to be reprovisioned. What happens in the middle? Well, it's really somewhat of a choose your own adventure story. And of course, there are means in which IT and users can take a stance. But for shared device deployments, there are new challenges. What if a user needs to change how their device is configured right now? And it was with that spirit that we developed two iOS applications that put the power back in the user's hand. And with that, I'd love to pass it to Tim to show you how we started on this journey of shared device management. Awesome, thanks Adam. The idea of being able to provision a device by the person who's actually going to be using the device changed the way we talk about using shared devices. With setup, the admin could make a few looks for a device and then move the decision downstream to the end user. Imagine having a stack of spare devices in the back room over wherever you're working and then being able to turn it into whatever device you need it to be for that day. Or you could have a collection of devices that are designed to be shared among your staff. You could pick up any device, select your role, which would expose all the right apps and settings, and then you could wipe the device at the end of the shift, clearing any PHI or PII completely. So what you're gonna see in this video, at the risk of sounding too technical, is the writing of a selection to an inventory field in Jamf from setup. Because it's changing its device record, we can see exactly what happened and use that to trigger events like deploying or exposing different apps, lifting or tightening different levels of restrictions, and changing the wallpaper. So here they're gonna select nursing. It will expose the right apps for nursing and change the wallpaper to be blue. Some people looked for a way to prove that when someone picked manager, for example, and got elevated rights, they actually were the manager. That said, plenty of customers got a lot of utility from using setup in their environment. But with setting something up, you need a way to go back to one. With reset, we can clear all the data on the device after someone had used it. We needed to make sure that all the user data and personally identifiable information was completely cleared. And we did that by making a really obvious button that would send an MDM erase all data command to the device from the device. Since we had no way to log people out of apps, wiping the entire device was a simple way to handle that. But we needed something that was a little more nuanced for some industries. The time it takes to get a device back online again after a wipe was prohibitively long in some workflows. 
In the years since we released this pair of apps, we learned a lot from our customers and the pain points of trying to share a device. Adam? Thanks, Tim. So Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset are awesome apps, and we've had great feedback from customers in many markets. But that said, there are still some problems outstanding for shared device deployments. In particular, password fatigue or login fatigue is a real problem for users across applications. Access control and user assignment are difficult to manage and track for IT. And end of shift device handoffs have not been simple for users or IT. So let's drill into the first, given that that's the center of the webinar today. What is password fatigue? Well, it's called many things. It might be what we're used to with our own lives. When we have a million passwords and we can't keep track of them when we log into Facebook or Netflix or Hulu. But there are extra layers of password fatigue that come into a corporate user. And that is the different identity systems that drive access to applications. In modern organizations that leverage single sign-on solutions, some of these problems are solved, where the user has a single identity that can grant them access to multiple resources. But on shared mobile devices that are non-personalized, that you check in and check out for the day, there's an added layer of this. It's one thing if it's your own personal device and you forget your password. At least you can use some of the native built-in features like iCloud Keychain and Safari passwords. But if this is a corporate device, those options aren't always there. If you have to manually remember your username and password for each application, well, that can be a challenge. So that's what we're talking about here. The frustration that arises when users have many unique passwords and repeat manual login and logout events on shared mobile devices. Now, the reality is this isn't a problem for desktops. For years, modern desktop authentication solutions have made it easy for care team members to walk up, tap their badge, and gain access to an EMR workstation. But those same types of workflows have not fully transferred over to Apple native mobile technology. So the question, how can we solve this challenge and prevent login fatigue on shared iOS devices and do it in an Apple native and Apple friendly way? Well, the answer is the new workflow powered by Jamf Setup and Reset that we call Single Login, a way that we can empower frontline workers to personalize and refresh shared iOS devices wirelessly and without help from IT. So with this release, we really aim to elevate the way that organizations empower mobile users and IT in four core ways. One, streamlining end user workflow. Two, enhancing security and management for IT. Three, enabling cross-application single sign-on, and four, simplifying device transitions between users. So here's how it works. Cloud identity provider-based network authentication and role-based provisioning and access control streamline the end-user workflow, which grants users access to a shared mobile device with their role, needs, and settings automatically provisioned and available upon logging in. To enhance security and management, Device and user assignment visibility is available to IT teams for audits and reporting. And we've also enhanced the way that passcodes can be enforced and cleared on a per shift basis. Our apps have embraced Apple's enterprise SSO framework to support cross application single sign on. And more specifically, its implementation by Microsoft in the form of their SSO plugin for Apple devices. And to simplify device transitions, our new soft reset logout workflow allows a user to log out at end of shift, which wirelessly reconfigures the device without a complete device wipe. And for the user, this comes together in a real simple three-part journey. They log in to set up the device, they use it for their shift, and they log out to reset it in seconds. So with that, I'd love to hand it back over to Tim so we can see a demo. Tim? So here's what it looks like in action. The user opens up the setup app and taps the login button. They then enter their Azure Active Directory credentials to gain access. In this example, we are using role-based provisioning to automatically configure the device based on the user's role known as nurse. And we know they're a nurse because their identity provider has that filled out already. So when it gets to the next screen, the user won't have to do anything. Nurse is pre-selected and it moves straight on into the next screen. 
and at the home screen of the device, they are now met with the appropriate apps, configurations, and something new. Their single sign-on footprint is established on that device, ready for supporting apps. In this example, you can see we're signed in already. And at the end of your shift, you open Reset, tap the End Shift button, which will then clear out the single sign-on footprint, erase that extension attribute that I mentioned earlier, and you're automatically refreshed for the next person to pick it up. And it happens in seconds. But what about device passcodes? There are a lot of options on how to secure a device. Some companies are leaving the passcode off the device completely and letting the security of the apps be the gatekeeper of the information. As long as there's a password or a PIN on the app, they're satisfied. You could deploy a passcode required config profile to the device. This gives the user an hour to create a passcode and enter it into the device after it receives that config profile. Having a shared passcode across your environment isn't a security stance I would recommend, but some companies are doing that in order to satisfy the need for a passcode and the encryption you get after one is set. But there is another way. You can set a totally optional flag in the setup app to disallow access to setup unless there's a passcode there. Let's take a look. If I try to open the setup app without anything in place, it will restrict me and tell me I have to have a passcode in order to start. Here, Adam's going to show off what it's like to do a session-based face ID. At the top of your shift, you can scan your face like Adam's doing here, and then you would use that to access your device, just like we do with our personal devices, which could be really great for a nursing environment where you may not want to have to touch the device every time with your fingers. And of course, you can set the pin as a backup. And after those things are set, after setup has established that those are there, then you can open the setup app, and you'll be allowed access to type in your username and password. Lastly, there's the passcode only option, where once again, you'll attempt to open setup, not allowed in until you set that device passcode. So you'll do that here in the settings app, just like you would normally set anything. And after you've set it, you're allowed access to setup and then continue on your shift. And I should say it's important to note that whether it's session based passcodes or you're using face ID, once you tap that reset button at the end to end your shift and it clears that single sign on footprint, it will clear the passcode for the next person. It will clear that, that extension attribute and get you completely ready for the next person to go through these exact same settings. And we can support users who might have multiple roles assigned to them in your IDP. You might be a manager who needs to grab a spare device from the back when you need an extra point of sale. You could log in as a manager and select that role from the pick list. In this example, we will be logging in as user 2, who has both pharmacist and nurse assigned to them. The user will log in as normal, but as opposed to user 1, who only had the nurse role, this one will see both options, and you can choose what you need to do with that device for that shift. It opens up a lot of flexibility to what you can do with these devices. And here you can see they'll pick nurse. And just like before, if it was assigned to them, it'll add that extension attribute with the nurse field. The smart groups will trigger and you'll have all of that automation kick off, the wallpaper changing. And if you open the single sign on app, you're now logged in as user two. And just like before, you'll open reset. Tap to end your shift with that big red button. It will clear that extension attribute, end the single sign-on session, and set you back to default, waiting for the next person to pick up the device and start it all over again. And we want as many apps as we can to work with single login. The benefits of having a per shift device passcode and clearing it at the end of the shift has already been used with our customers, but if we can extend that to log in all the apps they have on their device, that would be even better. If you have an in-house app, we want to work with you to help get it working with single login. We know that the main frustration people have with shared devices is having to log into multiple apps every day, possibly multiple times in a day. And we've said the words for supported apps a lot in this session. You saw the demo app that showed you logged in as proof that with this workflow, you would only need to sign in once when you would have had to sign in twice before. We're really excited to be working with as many app partners as we can to get this working on their apps. 
There are two main underlying technologies for this to work. We use the Apple native single sign-on framework, no app wrapping, no tricks. We deploy a single sign-on extension config profile from Jamf to the device. And we're also using Microsoft's single sign-on plugin for Apple so that you can use your Azure for your auth. We don't federate anything, it's straight from Azure directly to the Apple framework and then onto your apps. And with some of the app partners we've worked with, we've been able to help them integrate this new method of authentication into their apps in less than a week. It's a surprisingly light lift for such a huge impact. But logging in is only half the equation. What looks like a simple tap of the big red button is actually a complex series of automations that is totally invisible to the end user. Under the hood, there's a lot happening, which we would love to chat with your developers about, but just know that it's really cool and shows off just how powerful Jamf's toolset can be. If you are an app developer, we want to work with you to get both halves of this equation working with single login, and we want to share that with our audience on the Jamf Marketplace. Look for the new tag that features all of the single login supported apps. And if you have an application in your environment that you wish supported this workflow, we'll refer them to the Jamf Solution Partner Program. Our teams are here to help any app developer learn about, test, and build support for this workflow. During this preview release, there are some key considerations. Only Jamf's partner applications, who have embraced Microsoft and Apple frameworks, will be supported for the login and logout workflow. And it's important to note that the Microsoft technology that both Jamf and third-party apps would take advantage of is still in public preview itself and shouldn't be used in the production environment. So to recap, our goal is to remove the burdens that prevent true shared device productivity from beginning of the shift to the end and each login in between. And that's what led us to single login, a new way to empower frontline workers to personalize and refresh shared iOS devices wirelessly and without help from IT. And the new versions of Jamf's setup and reset that power the single login workflow are available in Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager today. Download them, explore the workflow capabilities, and let us know what you think. We can't wait to see how you can put these apps to use in your environment. Thank you so much for joining, and have a great rest of your day.